This is the new Multistrada V4S. Now I've ridden all the other top adventure bikes in the segment, the new KTM Super Adventure, the old Tiger 1200, I know there's a new one coming, the Tiger 900, all its variations, and of course the staple, the BMW 1250 GS. How does the new Multistrada V4 compare to those other bikes? The Multistrada was always more of a sporty machine with its 17 inch front wheel. The new one now has a 19 inch front wheel. How is that? going to affect the handling and the sporty nature of the bike. Can it still be? Is it now trying to be do too much and lost a little bit of focus? Or is it still the answer to the ultimate sports adventure machine? Join me on a wintry ride, a wintry January ride, to try and answer that question. Chopsy, roll the intro. So, jumping aboard this fine steed, look at all of this motorcycle you have in front of you. Really wide bars, I think the widest bars on a bike I've ever ridden. They're, they're really, really wide. Let's fire her up. Before we go anywhere, you know what we've got to do, let's do a sound check. Not too shabby. One of the most impressive things about this bike is the turning circle. It is the bars. Look how much they turn. It is unbelievable how tight a turning circle you can do on this bike. I think it's got the best turning circle of any bike ever. Even in you know proper lightweight enduro machines. It's an incredible turning circle on this. Unfortunately today, you know, it's, 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 well it says it's 16 degrees now, it's not. It's more like 9 degrees because I've been sat about. And uh, yeah, it's a bit wet, so it's a bit of a shame on this ride we're not going to be able to, you know, absolutely unleash this bike to its full potential. But what I'm going to do, this isn't going to be the only video on this bike, I'm going to do another video where I take this somewhere. We do a, this is just going to be you know, round the block, a first look, you know, uh, sort of hours ride today through some country lanes and stuff. What I'm going to do in another video is take this out on a journey somewhere. So a decent journey to test things like tank range. You know, what's it like on a, on a longer trip? So I'll probably head to Cheddar Gorge or something. So this is the first look of this bike. I will be back with a full sort of sum up and test and a long trip on it. So stay tuned for that one. So first things first, the riding position is extremely comfortable. As I say, massively wide bars, a very, very comfortable seat. I'm very upright, you know, my back is upright. The pet, because the, I'm six foot two and sort of uh, 20 stone-ish, you know, I've lost, I'm on a bit of a diet actually, but never mind that. Um, I find the seat, quite, the peg's quite high, the, the, the seat to foot position quite tight. Now I know you can adjust the seat height on this, so I'm going to play around with the seat height, but if I take the seat height up, it's going to put me in more sort of dirty air over the screen, so, but I mean it's fine, but uh, it doesn't feel actually as sporty as the GS. I think the GS has a more sporty riding position where you're sort of cantered forward a little bit more, you're very upright on this perhaps not the sportiest of positions but very very comfortable and I guess on the mile muncher a touring machine that's really what you're looking for there's a couple of things which I'm really interested on with this Multistrada whether it addresses two things which I'm a little bit concerned about firstly this motor obviously this 90 degree 1158 cc v4 motor is more or less the same as what is in the Panigale the Street Fighter, and I've always, when I borrowed the Street Fighter last, I found it this engine hard work. A lot of engine braking, you know, you, you had to be quite precise with it all the time at, at low speed, and it was a little bit tiring to ride. Even though the riding position was perfect, the actual riding the bike was tiring because it had masses of engine braking. Now, I've been on this for 20 minutes, and that seems to have been addressed. It doesn't have that massive engine braking that the Street Fighter had. 
the manners around town are actually very very nice and you don't have to concentrate to ride it slowly and that's what the street fighter was like that's what the panagali is like but this is much easier and it, you know you don't have to think about going slowly which is great the other thing i'm a little bit concerned about this is is the multistrada always had you know the 17 inch front wheel to make it you know an exciting it was always the bike which was the you know the uh, the hooligan's choice for an adventure bike if you like you know nimble 17 inch front wheel was beautiful now they've gone for this 19 <laughs> hey is it still gonna be as much fun in the twisties and i think that's why we've got such wide bars on here to give you the extra bit of leverage to compensate from the fact you've got a bigger front wheel so today unfortunately it's wet it's cold you know i'm not going to be able to push the handling of this bike but hopefully when i go from a long ride we do a dry day and we can really sort of throw it around i can tell you it changes direction wow that is that's quite amazing actually that direction change it's very very oh, it's really on its toes it's as quick to change direction as i would say the gs is the gs changes direction really quickly because it's got that low boxer engine and this actually feels equally as agile of where you want to point it how precise it is yeah it feels very much like the gs from that perspective which is a good thing very very good thing of course the gs also has a 19 inch front wheel it's got that sort of clever tele lever setup got a lot of power there 170 horsepower in fact 170 horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque so the most powerful adventure bike on the market <laughs> brakes are also fantastic stylema calipers on this and unlike the uh the Tiger 900, which also has Stylemas, you know, as I mentioned in my Tiger 900 review, it didn't feel like you were making use of those Stylemas. They were a bit softened off. I don't know if it was due to the pad material they were using. You know, and there's obviously a lot of travel on the suspension on, the, on an adventure bike. You know, it's, it's, it's not like a sports bike, but these Stylemas on here are much more sporty feeling, much more aggressive than the versions on the Tiger. I like that. If you're going to have Stylema calipers on your bike, make use of the performance at least yeah it's uh oh, cyclists cyclists quick shifter blipper is also very nice actually quite smooth blipper yeah it's nice as nice as any other system much nicer than the bmw gs because that was always the flaw. I know this isn't a BMW GS review, but I want to compare this to the other adventure bikes I've ridden, you know? So I think when you're borrowing something like this, what is valuable is to compare it to its peers. And the GS is a fantastic bike. I mean, there's a reason why that's the best-selling bike for the last 10 years, you know? But I think its weak point is its gearbox. And the gearbox on this is much smoother. The quick shifter's got a much nicer action. I have found it's not perfect because I found it difficult to to find neutral. I found it a little bit tricky to find neutral on this bike when you you know when you're parked up. But apart from that, it's buttery. Steam up. So here she is, the Multistrada V4S. Let's have a closer look at her. So starting at the front, we have of course the 19-inch front wheel, Stylema calipers. This version, which has everything on it, the full packs, even has a carbon fibre front mug guard if you peer in here you can see the front bank of cylinders of that v4 motor mm, sort of quite exposed there's not much sort of protection on those they're getting a bit of a blasting a bit of a coating above the engine you have the oil cooler which remains reasonably clean and to the left and right you have the water radiators so uh, they've got all those tucked out the way but the front part of the engine is a little bit exposed to the weather because that v4 motor has always been known for being a little bit on the warm side what they've done they had the side radiators and vents pushing the air out away from the rider and then you've got these lower vents here scoops if you like guiding cool air at the rider so it sort of get heat away bring cool air in 
And today it's been like nine degrees. I've not noticed any heat coming off that motor, but I know this is a hot motor. On the Panigale, it's hot. On the Street Fighter, it's hot. You know, it generates some heat, which is quite welcome in the winter, but a summer's day in 30 degrees, it'll be interesting to see how this setup works. The new front beak of the bike, it's just started raining, absolutely lovely. This is the radar module. So this is what gives you that sort of radar functionality but it gives it a little bit of a flat piece on the front. But as far as front ends go for adventure bikes, this is probably the sexiest looking adventure bike. I think, I don't think there's any argument there. I think this is the most sexy looking adventure bike. Really like the Ducati DRL design and the whole headlight design looks really cool. The switch gear is all illuminated, you know, very nice switch gear. I always struggle a little bit with the layout of the Ducati switch gear and they've got the two, the two of these buttons opposing each other, trying to push them here. With the separate jog wheel, you know, this is actually a very nice switch kit. Works very well, lovely quality, very nice actually. You have a cubby hole here for your phone or the, or the key. Um, there's also a charging port in there as well, USB charger. So to use the app for all the navigation, the Ducati Connect app, you know, you, you, you really need your phone on charge because it obviously drain the battery and that's how all the sat nav works. I've not set that up. I'll try and set that up for the next part of this video. What is surprising with the panniers, is they move. The idea being, you know, it keeps the bike stable at speed. It doesn't cause that buffeting. So these all actually, as you can see, waggle around. And that is by design. Of course, another change for this year is we now have, you know, a double-sided swinging arm. I know the Pikes Peak version has gone back to a single-sided one, but double-sided swinging arm, I think really for a bit of extra rigidity off-road and whatnot. The rear pillion seat is also heated, if you spec it. But there we are, that is the main features of the new Multistrada V4S. Let's jump back on. Wow, well, looks like the pin locks seen better days. My pin locks playing up now. I didn't get my transitions visor for Christmas, by the way, everybody. <laughs> Santa, Santa couldn't find one in the UK when he wanted to buy one, so I didn't get a transitions visor. What I did get was a new Hero 10 camera. So you may notice that the picture quality from the helmet camera is now 4K60. So I've upgraded from me Hero 4 to a new Hero 10. So if you're wondering why it looks all a little bit different on this video, that'll be why. Heated seat, high, yes please. Heated grips. Uh, you've got to press the heated grip button to then bring on the air. The heated grips turn off when you switch the bike on and off, which is a bit annoying. That's one great thing about the GS, you know, the heated grips stay on when you, when you uh, turn the bike on and off. They turn off on this. Also, it's got a heated grips button here, which you press, but then you've got to go into the menu to select what heat you want it. You can't just like, press it three times for maximum heat, so that's a bit of a, a bit fantastic. I love the sound of that motor. I do love the, I mean, who doesn't love the sound of a V4? The V4 on this doesn't sound as nice as like the, uh, the, the RS V4. That does sound better, but it certainly sounds better than the GS or, or anything else. When this engine's on song, oh, it sounds absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, first impressions actually, it's nice, it is very nice. It seems to change direction extremely quickly. It's nice around town now. It's nice on the, on the lower throttle range, you know, ranges. I mean, this is now, let's have, let's go right down. That's 2000 revs in third gear at 20 miles an hour. You know, you've got plenty of power there. It's actually hardly any vibrations, you know. It's very, very smooth, this motor. And this engine, is actually 1.2 kilos lighter than the old 1260 V twin. So this engine is lighter, it's more compact. It's enabled them to change the chassis, you know, with the new monocoupe suspension, new new swinging arm, new sub subframe. It's managed to sort of compact the bike and change the whole geometry. And uh, yeah, it's it's a lovely unit. I think the downside with it, we're not going to see it today, but I think is the fuel consumption. The fuel consumption is way up compared to the V-twin version. But we'll see what we get out of a tank when we do our longer ride a bit later on. But everything else about it, I think is better. 
everything. It's got better mid-range. It's got better low-speed manners. It's got better top end, obviously, being a being a, a, a V4. Everything is better, I think, apart from the fuel consumption. I said this engine is very similar to what is in the, you know, the Street Fighter, the Panigale. Well, there's one major difference, and you're probably aware of this, you know, if, if you're looking to buy one of these, and that's the fact that this, this engine is the first Ducati, I think, forever not to have desmodromic valves. Now, desmodromic valves are where the valves are actuated up and down mechanically. There's no spring to return the valve up, you know, out the cylinder. Well, this has valve springs. This is the first Ducati to have valve springs, which is, you know, a, a massive thing. The advantage to having valve springs if they, is they've actually managed to stretch the valve checks on this bike to 60,000 kilometres, which is, I think, 36,000 miles. So there's 36,000 miles between a valve check. That's incredible. I mean, that is the that is the other draw, draw, drawback with this V4 motor is the fact that it's very expensive to work on. You know, V4s, they're a lot of labour when you have servicing and you have your valve checks done. So you're only having to do that every 36,000 miles. Comparing that to the GS, the GS, you have to check the valves every 12,000 miles. Oh, lovely Mark II. I wouldn't have it out in this weather. But on the GS, you have to do valve checks every... 12,000 miles, so you have to do three valve checks on the GS for every one valve check on the Ducati. Obviously on the GS they're very easy to do because they're right at the end of the cylinders, but I suspect the, the cost of that valve check will be about the same as the GS, because three GS valve service is probably the same as one V4 Ducati valve check. I don't know for sure, but it's certainly not going to be more expensive to have the valve checks done on this than it is a GS. Something to bear in mind. Also, while we're talking about servicing, the, the oil change on this, you know, the basic service is every 9,000 miles. But if you don't do 9,000 miles in a year, you don't have to have it done annually. Normally, if you don't do the miles or not, you've got to have your bike serviced every year to keep the warranty up. On this, you can go two years between an oil change. So if you're not done the 9,000 miles in a year, which you probably should if you're buying this sort of adventure bike, you should be doing the miles. But if you don't, you don't have to get that service done until the second year. So there's another option there to save a little bit of money. Woohoo! So far, it's all sounding pretty damn good, isn't it? <laughs> it's all sounding pretty damn fantastic. Where's my checkbook? Hold on there. Hold on a minute there. The, <laughs> the downside with this boy is it's a Ducati. What I mean by that is they're not cheap. The Ducatis are expensive and this bike will set you back £19,000 in stock trim that's without heated grips without the adaptive cruise control which we'll come on to in a minute without all of the heated seats and grips and center stands you know just the base bike is £19,000 it's two packs you can get for this the basic pack is I think called the radar pack that gives you the adaptive cruise control the blind spot detection uh, the centre stand, the heated grips, the heated seat. I think the bike is about 22,000 or 21,000 with that. It's another couple of, good couple of grand with that kit on. And then the premium pack, the pack with everything, puts an acropovic slip on on and the carbon front mud guard. And I think it's about 23. I'll pop it on the screen if I've got those prices slightly wrong. But fully loaded, which this bike is in this spec, this bike will set you back. Twenty-three thousand pounds. That's a little bit spicy. Let's go up the hill climb road. I mean, we're not going to be doing any laying it down today, but we can have a little see. You know what it's like at changing direction, all that biz. It's so wet today. It's so wet. It's actually eight degrees today, and I've got a mesh. I've got my new Knox Urban Pro Mark II utility jacket on, which is mesh. One thing Ducati bang on about this bike is they spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel sort of perfecting the airflow because another drawback of this V4 motor, I said there, there wasn't any other drawbacks. Well, there is another huge drawback to it in the Panigale and in the Street Fighter. It's the amount of heat this engine generates. You know, it is a hot bike to ride. You know, those other bikes are very hot. What Ducati have done with this, because they got free rein to play around with the aero, 
I, I thought you totally threw it on the walk around, but they're basically taking the hot air away from where, where they've placed the radiators. They're diverting the hot air away. They're bringing in cool air to the rider, and they spent a lot of time wind tunnel testing all of this frontal area. So I thought I'd come out today in a mesh jacket and see how warm I am, because all of this air is being deflected away from me. And actually, I haven't even noticed until I said that, that I'm warm with a mesh jacket on, and it's eight degrees. So I think it is doing a fantastic job. This aero on this bike is doing a fantastic job. While we're talking about the aero, the screen is the other thing which is great. Single, so easy to adjust the screen up and down. One finger, one finger to adjust the screen. What I do find is I'm in perfect bubble of calm, to coin, coin a TMF phrase, around my shoulders and body, but that is deflecting quite a lot of air at the helmet. And you can hear that coming through on the video, that, that buffeting noise. So. With the screen down, you can hear I'm getting quite a lot of air in my helmet. I am 6'2", the screen up, it's reduced a bit, but I'm still getting a little bit. So it's definitely a bike you're going to have to wear earplugs on the motorway, you know, because you're going to find it too noisy, I think. Or get a little extra screen to add on the top. I guess that's what it needs if you're going to go a long distance on those little extra add-on screens. But apart from that, absolutely, the aerodynamics is fantastic. We'll go on the motorway in a minute and we'll test out all the adaptive stuff and we'll see what that aero is like at a higher speed. But at the moment, I can't believe I'm perfectly warm. The technology on this is just insane. You know, this bike has got, in this spec, has got everything which is poss you can possibly, it's, I think it's got the most technology of any other bike on the market. There's nothing else which has got all of the tech this has got. You've got blind spot detection. You've got adaptive cruise control, which I really like. Heated grips, heated seat, fully electronic suspension, you know, all adjustable, different modes. It's got the off-road mode. It's got absolutely everything. You know, phone integration. And what I like with the, I haven't got it working yet. I haven't tried to set it up. But you, when you go into the navigation, you have the full map over your screen, you know, so you're not just doing sort of turn, turn left, turn right. You've got the full sort of Google Maps overlaid onto your screen, which is great. I don't really need that because, of course, I've got my ultimate add-ons mount with my phone. So I don't, that's why I haven't bothered to set that up. But that is, you know, this bike has got so much technology on it. So much technology. I'm going to be heading to Durdledore. I think I called it Doodledore at the intro, but Durdledore. Corner! Dry corner! Bubble of carb. Oh! Ooh, a little bit careful. There's a lot of muck in the road. 